So we found that patients with lobular breast cancer in the iSpy trial had the same rate of breast conservation surgery as those with ductal breast cancer. This is a little bit different than what some other studies show where patients with lobular breast cancer actually have higher mastectomy rates. It may be that what we're seeing is a response to neoadjuvant chemotherapy in these molecularly high-risk tumors that allowed for breast conservation, but more likely it actually reflects patient choice because we saw that mastectomy rates were pretty high across across the board for both lobular and ductal patients in the ISPY2 trial. Um, the other thing that argues against um, shrinking the tumor and uh, being the explanation for the equal rates of breast conservation is that we did see higher positive margin rates in the lobular breast cancer patients. So this is something that's seen for lobular breast cancer patients in general. Uh, this happens because lobular breast cancers grow in a diffuse pattern. So oftentimes they will extend beyond the imaging finding on mammogram, ultrasound, and even MRI. Um, so I was a little bit surprised that we saw these higher positive margin rates in this trial where we have tumors that should have a higher response rate to neoadjuvant chemotherapy plus serial MRIs, but we did see about a 20% positive margin rate in the lobular patients having breast conservation compared to 7 to 8 positive margin, 7 to 8% positive margin rate in the ductal patients on the trial. What we saw was that patients with lobular breast cancer who have high molecular risk on this trial had much higher rates of nodal pathologic complete response than what's been previously reported in the literature for most patients with lobular cancer. The prior studies looking at lobular breast cancer did look at factors like um, tumor receptor subtypes, so HER2 positivity, triple negative status, and those have been shown to be associated with higher nodal PCR rates. But in this trial, we had uh, access to a very unique population of lobular breast cancers, and these are uh, mammoprint high-risk tumors. So we believe that the high rate of nodal PCR in this group uh, reflects the fact that we were able to select patients with a higher likelihood of responding to neoadjuvant chemotherapy therapy. Um, the 40% overall nodal PCR rate in the lobular group was not statistically different than that seen in the ductal group. It was a little bit numerically lower. Um, if the numbers were bigger, perhaps we would have seen a difference between lobular and ductal within the iSPY trial. Um, but again, um, what we saw did not reach statistical significance. And I think more importantly, the nodal PCR rate is higher than what we have previously seen in unselected lobular patients. Using a molecular assay like mammoprint, um, also known as the 70 gene assay, can help to identify tumors that are more likely to respond to chemotherapy. Um, whether we could select lobular patients using a lobular specific assay um, in an even more granular fashion, I think is unknown. But it seems that in this study, uh, Mammoprint did pretty well in identifying the lobular patients with a good likelihood of having um, a nodal response to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. We also stratified within the mammoprint high-risk tumors. You can further split those into high one and high two, where mammoprint high two has the highest molecular risk. And mammoprint high two status was associated with the highest rates of nodal PCR um, across the board. And we saw that in both the lobular and the ductal patients. I think the challenge is that we just don't have that many mammoprint high two lobular breast cancers. But this does suggest that within patients uh, who have lobular breast cancer, there's a sub set who will benefit from neoadjuvant chemotherapy, and we have to keep working towards figuring out exactly who those patients are. It can be hard to know whether uh, patients with lobular breast cancer should have primary surgery or have neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Um, because of the diffuse growth pattern, patients with lobular breast cancer are more likely to present with larger tumors and higher rates of having positive nodes. Um, when we see this higher stage, we often want to do something to try to shrink the tumor, such as neoadjuvant therapy. But we have many studies showing that lobular breast cancers have lower response rates to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And this is likely because um, across the board, most lobular tumors are lower grade, have lower proliferation rates, tend to be hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative, and have lower grade. And these factors are um, associated with um, lower responses to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So it's, it's tricky to know if you 
um, have a patient who's been diagnosed with a, a stage three lobular breast cancer, if you give chemotherapy, is the tumor going to shrink? Is the lymph node going to convert from positive to negative? Um, and if not, perhaps you're not helping that patient by giving them chemotherapy up front, and you should instead just be going to the operating room. But if you go to the operating room, you're going to have to do a more extensive operation, such as a mastectomy or possibly an axillary lymph node dissection. So the heterogeneity in lobular breast cancer allows us to uh, try and identify the, the subset of lobular tumors that may actually respond to neoadjuvant chemotherapy.